And you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 radio show on 92kills.com. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? It's your boy Drewski with the voice of the South. Team B can be here. I'm with Lord Light Skin, and we have an extravagant guest. I won't say special because we have special guests all the time, and I think she'll be there to it. So we have Miss Queen Talented. Um, Jasmine Brown in the building, what's that then? What's up, y'all? I'm gonna just take these off because I can't hear myself. Oh, okay. But uh, what's going on? How you doing? Man, I'm doing all right. This weather is uh, terrible out here in Houston, but uh, how was your No, it could be life? worse. It, it was raining and now it's not, so we just, we're not gonna, we're not gonna dwell on it being bad. We're just happy that we're still dry right now, amen? Okay, positive energy. Yeah. Come on with positive energy. Yeah, come, come on, on now. Positive energy. So you just flew in um, for yeah. James Harden weekend. Yeah. How excited are you about uh, James Harden? Super excited. You know, I was here last year. I did the comedy show last year. Um, but this time, it's only four of us. So it's going to be like just, you know, more of an opportunity to really get out there and do my thing thing. You know, I got a couple of jokes since last year. You feel me? So, um, and then also just being invited back obviously says something about, you know, how I carry myself, how I do my thing. So two years in a row, baby. Hopefully, you know, three, four, five is going to be nasty. You know? Yeah, hopefully he stack it up. Um, yeah. So I know you do your stand up as Toya and as Jazzy. Which yeah. one is uh, going to be at the show this week? Oh, it's just Jazzy. Just yeah, y'all got to come to my show if you want to see Toya. Mm. Okay, and I actually had a show here a couple months ago and it sold out. So, hey, Sam, listen, y'all showed me so much love. So thank you again. I will be back because y'all, ooh, the energy was insane. But yeah, that's when you'll see Toya perform. Okay, so how did you get into like comedy? I know you started off like on Instagram. And, or you didn't start off on Instagram, but Instagram is what made you go viral. Um, how did you start into going to the comedy lane? Um, well, I really just started making videos on Instagram, just venting. You know, I, I started like this segment called Excuse Me While I Vent, and it was really just me, you know, talking about things that would happen to everybody. And it was almost like one of those videos, like, has this happened to me? Has, has, can anyone relate to it? Has it happened to you? You know, and it kind of make fun of it. And then that ended up being its own thing. And, um, so, you know, Toya was already created subconsciously from when I was a little girl. And, um, you know, when I started doing Toya videos, a comedian by the name of Angus Black, he was the first person to really, like, give me a chance. He reached out and, you know, asked if I wanted to do comedy. And uh, he spoke to my manager first, and she told him that I, I could do stand-up. Mind you, I've never, ever in my life wanted to do stand-up. I've always admired comedians, but I've never was like, oh, I can get up there and do that. Never in my life. So. When the opportunity came about, I was like, nah, I can't do that. Like, I'm an actress, because I'm an actress first, people don't right. really know about me. Um, so I was like, nah, I don't want to do a stand-up, it's going to take away from, you know, my acting and things like that. So he's like, okay, uh, can you meet me in the middle? Will you will you host the show? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I can host. You know, I've hosted things before. You know, I was on 106 and Park. And um, so I was like, all right, cool. So I hosted, the, <laughs> I hosted it, and our headliner was late. Um, and I ended up having to just wing it. And I was up there for 25 minutes and I blacked out. People went crazy. And then it was like, I can't even explain that feeling, you know? So after that, it was like, okay, this, I can do something with this. Right. So how apprehensive were you to go to social media knowing that you wanted to be taken as a serious actress? Cause you know how they give the, the stigma that, you know, people on social media are not as talented as people. Put right. time into that heart. Well, the thing is, it wasn't a plan. I didn't have like a strategic plan on social media. I was just on there living my truth, talking, talking my shit, like just doing things like that. I never was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make videos. I'm gonna talk about this and hope to gain success mm -hmm. or anything. But that was never the plan. So it just came organically with me, just like doing things that I thought was funny and just talking things, talking about things that you know happened to me and that people were able to relate to it. And then it just kind of grew from there. But. Toya had a separate page where I can go on there and just really like wild out. So, but again, it was never for, it was never to become anything. It was just like, okay, I can't say this, but I'm gonna say it as Toya. It was just like another lane to use my voice, but I never, I never had a plan. Like all of this stuff just kind of happened in its own way for me that I just, I, I it was not a plan. So how hard was it like coming up with like, I guess your first like five or 10 minutes set for stand up? You know, I'm a storyteller. 
So I, I don't look at it like, oh, I got to tell jokes. It's like, okay, I'm living my truth. I'm going to tell y'all what happened. And it might be funny to you. It wasn't funny to me in the moment, but I'm going to talk about it. So really just like stories with Toya are mixed in with mine. And then my stories are like mixed in with mine and my homegirls. So they're all true. You know, and people like my stuff because it's real life. You know, I'm not up there cracking jokes. Like I'm, I'm telling a story. So when I went up there to do my, to host this Toya, I was really just like improv off the crowd. Like I'm really good at improv and I was taking, and, and, and along with me doing acting classes, you know, I was also taking improv classes as well. And I'm not shy, you know, I've, I've, I've done plays and things like that. So I, I don't have stage fright. So getting on stage and entertaining people and, you know, talking to people in the audience and improv like, it just came natural, but it ended up turning into something else. Okay. So, um, I just seen on social media that you just turned 30, so you grown. Yeah. I say you're grown. Oh, grown. Grown um, woman. How does your outlook on life look now that you're 30 opposed to when you were in your 20s? You know, I thought 30 was old. I was like, oh my gosh, 30. Yeah, that's <laughs> old. Like, back in the day, I was like, I'm going to be married by 25, kid at 26. Uh, and now it's just like hell no like I'm not even on now. I'm not even thinking about no I thought cheering. it would be a life crisis at that yeah point. but like honestly you know in your 20s I feel like that's when you're really just trying to set up your life for your 30s mm -hmm. you know and a lot of people are you know are lucky enough or are blessed enough to be able to do it in their 20s but I feel like when you reach 30 it's just different you know you feel different it's just like okay if I was playing before I can't play no more because 30s is really like the time when you really gotta get it in. And I really just like, honestly, like the moment I turned 30, like I feel like my life changed. I know it sounds crazy, but like, it, it really did. And I'm still, and I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm more open now. I'm learning so much more. You know, I'm learning a lot about myself. And it's just, it's a really great place. 30 for me was different because I started to take naps. I didn't take naps. Uh, before, oh, I've been taking before. naps. I mean, most women say, you know, naps is the best thing possible. Oh, yeah. I used to always feel like I was gonna miss something. So I just started taking naps, but they are wonderful. I should have been taking Yeah, naps. you tripping. Yeah, yeah. You got was, FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -uh. Um, so, is there anything that uh, Jasmine Brown believes that Toya wouldn't go for? Um, wow. Well, you know, Toya, hmm, I feel like, I feel like Toya and I have a lot of the same beliefs, but it's just a matter of if I'm going to speak on it or not. Okay. You know, I don't necessarily have to say how I feel in certain lanes, but Toya can, you know, but it doesn't mean that I don't relate to Toya. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. I would have to, I would have to really think about that. Toya, you know, Toya is just her own person. And, you know, obviously because I created her, that it all comes from a place of myself mm -hmm. as well. So it's just one of those things. I mean, like, we're, we're not that far apart. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I uh, watched one of your videos where you wasn't toying and you was talking about uh, setting the mood. Yeah. Uh, with oh, the dude, with, you know, no, if you come over, you got to set the mood. So how does a man set the mood if you were to come over to his face? Well, for one, clean up. Like, that's one. Clean up. Also, you know, Show some effort. Wash your ass. Some guys just will be out all day long and think that it's a luxury to get them in the in the element. No boo. I want to I want to see water on your collarbone, like water. Oh, drops. like fresh. Yeah, yeah. Or just not not even. But like, I want to know that like you know that you take care of yourself. Lotion up. Moisturize. All right, so what part of his body got moisturized? The whole men, bar. No, because most men ain't putting no lotion on their feet. They just putting socks on. Well, I don't see that. Right. So if I don't see your feet, you know, then okay, cool. But I mean, like, come on, man, just show effort. Because as women, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on us to just be A, B, C, and D, but then a guy can just do anything. And I think that's BS. Right. You know, moisturize, show effort, you know what I'm saying? Take a shower, brush your damn teeth, clean up, light a candle, have some, you know, because when you walk in, you're going to be like looking around or whatever. Give, give me something, set a vibe. Put some incense or whatever, even if it make me sneeze. Light a candle, do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Okay, so I know you just said like it's easier for guys. So, you know, Jermaine Dupree made comments about this being like the whole era and women getting famous off, mm -hmm. pretty much being like strippers and hoes. Whereas in the dude can rap about it. Whereas in, in the comedians, I was just telling my producer like, uh, like comedian, when, when female comedians now are more attractive than when I was growing up. Like, they'll, <laughs> they'll give it to them, they wouldn't like, but like, like you, 
like be Simone just so like, as y'all are, are, are attractive women? Do you feel like that you have to be the whole package now being a female comedian? And do you feel like you're being taken as serious as male comedians? You know what? Um, it takes time, you know, but I'm, I'm not going in there like, I have to do this. I'm just, I'm living my truth. Mm -hmm. So it's like, either you're going you, you gonna to figure it out now or you're going to be late. But either way, like I'm still, I'm still living in my truth. So it's not stopping me from doing anything. And you know, as far as like being taken serious, you know, there's times we get on the road and I'm, I'm working with like really profound comedians and they don't respect me until I get on stage. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you can say what you want about me. I work, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you could be like, oh, she came from the gram. She woo woo woo, but it's like, okay, but I worked up. And, and, I, and, and to only been doing it for two years, I feel like, I feel like I built a really good name for myself, especially like in the circuit where people respect what I do. You know, I'm not up here kicking and playing with people like I'm doing real time. Like when I like a show I had in Jacksonville, Florida, I'll never forget. I was on as Toya. I did an hour and 30 minutes. That's special time. Yeah, that's like that's crazy. comedy special time. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited that I could do it. My agent was like, uh, we're going to get fine because you went over. <laughs> but, to, right. but for me, it was just knowing that I can. You know right. what I'm saying? So it doesn't really bother me if people don't believe in me and things like that because I'm because I'm gonna show you on the stage. I'm I'm believing on the stage. You know what I mean? And I know that Toya is my lethal weapon and or my secret weapon. So if, if you're not gonna respect the jazzy side of things, you're gonna respect what I've done and what I've created. Cause a lot of people still don't even know that I'm the creator of Toya. So like y'all just gonna have to put some respect on it at some era of the jazzy brand, period. Right. You know. So how did you decide that you wanted to split the two like in your comedy show? I did see that you, you go on this jazzy, mm -hmm. you have somebody between you, you go on this Toya, yeah. which is, you know, amazing because Thank most you. people can't do 10 minutes on stage, you right. do two different sets. Yeah. How did you like uh, make the transition to saying that I want to put both of us on stage? You know, just being different. I started, I started as Toya. Right. So it was really putting me on. Mm -hmm. So being that I started as Toya first, people started to ask me like, oh, we want to see jazz, we want to see jazz. It got to the point where I had to get on stage, but Toya had a stronger set and had longer time. So it was like, okay, how, how do I figure out a way to, to do Toya and then like introduce myself to it? Okay, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be the warm up girl. I'm going to come out, I'm going to do like 20 minutes and then Toya going to close out and do 45. But I did it with Toya first, so obviously it's more comfortable, it's easier for me to do it as Toya because this is a character that I've known all my life. You know, and I can, and it's free range. I can do whatever I want. For me, when I do stand up, it's more so like, okay, I kind of have to not live up to what I'm talking about, but also just like, it's me. Like, I'm, you know, people are gonna be like, all right, you said this or whatever. Like, if it's Toya, I can be like, it's easier for me to sweep under the rug if I'm really talking crazy. Right. So I have to be more mindful when I when I do performance, my jazzy stuff. But um, yeah, I had to give the people what they wanted. All right, so being a creator, being a creative, like who are some of the entertainers that inspired you? I won't just say necessarily just say comedians, but because I know you do a lot of different things. Who are some like entertainers that you look at and you say, okay, that's different thinking. They really like inspired me to go this way. Right. Well, you know, growing up, I've always like how Toya was created. Like I, I was a huge Martin fan, and I just really that's loved. The best show, I right? really just loved how Martin just really like turned into these characters, and you didn't even think that it was him you know and I just love that I just love the personality behind it I love the commitment behind it so when I created Toya it was never to mimic Martin it was like okay I can express myself this way you know Toya was my friend you know so it, it started like that but I was inspired by Eddie Murphy Martin Lawrence Dave Chappelle like those are like my top three you know comedians and actors that I really just fell in love with because they showed me that I can open up and they showed me another way to express myself. You so know? who's your favorite Martin character? <laughs> Man, you know what? Martin is just so amazing. But I love, oh my gosh. I can't even say, they're all so great. I mean, old Otis, Jerome, come on, Dragonfly Jones. I was in for Halloween like three years ago. <laughs> Mama Pan, Chanel, come on, man, everybody. I mean, like, you can't just pick one. Right. Because every time one of them comes into the scene, you know that it's going to be funny. Right, right. So, you know, you named Eddie Murphy, and I just I just thought about, like, Eddie Murphy really did, like, a whole movie by himself with the Nutty Professor. Yes. Like, he was everybody. Legendary. Um, would you want to go into that lane to where you try to do, like, a whole movie with, like, all your characters and yeah. bring them to life? I mean, 1,000%. Shout out to Marlon Wayans. 
who just did Sex Tablets, you know, went to the premiere. I loved it, you know, and I know that. And when he got up and he was talking about it, it just, there was just so much work behind it. You could tell he was really proud of it because it took so long. And as I'm watching it, you know, when I watch movies and I watch certain things, like I'm not watching it like for a laugh, I'm watching it like, okay, creatively, energetically, this is what had to happen in order for us to get this final product. Like he had to shoot every scene two, three times. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're, you're shooting six times as hard because you're six different people. You know, so just looking at that, like I, the respect that I, and I've always had respect for him, but just for that, I just thought that was amazing. But yeah, 1000%, I feel like I have the work ethic to do something like that. And I have the character to do it as well. So do you feel like that, um, would you just want to do like write and produce or would you just want to be a face? Like if you had to choose one or the other. Oh, I'm, I'm not choosing because I'm already doing them all. Well, I know you're doing them all. No, 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 you don't quite know, talented. You don't know. Look, look, I know you. I know you write. I know yeah. you produce. Yeah. I know you're a comedian. I know that you're a recording artist. Um, I know that you're a host. Um, well, that's five. So I'll say just queen talented. But you probably got more talents than I actually I like. Just, I, I'm a poet too. On the low, nobody knows so, that. Yeah, you a poet? I even know. It. Ah. <laughs> um, so with, with with all those talents, how did you say that this is something? Like, how do you focus? Because I know I get scared of writing, being a creative, and thinking of so many. Yeah. How do you focus on let me get this object completed um, without like losing focus? Well, you just have to do it one at a time. You know, the main thing right now is the stand up. The stand up is what's really like, is like taking most of my attention, you know? So that's where my energy goes. But then, you know, I have moments to myself where I'm just really creative. Like last night, I was just really in a really deep creative space where I was just up writing. So then I have those moments. So I just embrace it as it comes. But stand up is what's really taking lead right now. I just finished writing my first movie. Um, so that was something that took forever. It was like eight hour days, like it was like six days in a row, eight hour days, like insane. And then the rewrite. So it was a man. So there's that. And there's also my stand up. And there's also auditions, you know, because remember I'm in LA now, you know, you're auditioning for a lot of things. So I don't really know how I do it, uh, to be honest, because it's it's usually on minimal rest, you know, but I'm just the type of person, I'm like, okay, the show must go on, you know? And I understand that like, it's my time. So it's like, I'm gonna express myself, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do as much as I can do until I burn myself out. And that's the thing, I haven't burned out. And I've gotten close, I'm just like, this is just a lot. But I've never had that feeling like I'm burning myself out because I always just manage to muster up whatever whatever I have left and just deliver. It's because you take naps. You took naps early. Yeah. <laughs> you have like this reserve energy. I don't take naps, so um, I couldn't figure it out. So um, Netflix or studio movie? Would you rather like it, it come out in big theaters all over or like Netflix? Because Netflix is in every home now. Um, I would love to have. A series on Netflix, that would be dope. but a, a, but also a box office hit. Mm. Okay. Yeah, like I, I, I'm looking at like Netflix and how Netflix is trying to like capitalize the market, and they're like, yes. hey, you know, we got all the stand up specials on here, we got all yep. the movies on here, we got all your favorite series on Netflix. Um, all right. Well, he just gave me the sign. Okay. You know. What? I don't understand what your signals are. Lower the lights key. Alright, so yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, all social media platforms at Watch Jazzy. That's Watch Jazzy on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, even though I'm not really on it that much anymore because it took all my favorite filters away. You can also follow Toya Turn Up if you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's Toya underscore turn up. And yeah, make sure you guys are staying keep put your post notifications on. Uh, I might be in a city near you, so make sure you guys are clicking the link in my bio and looking at all my tour dates and things like that. And I'll be back in the H real soon. Appreciate it. Uh, it's uh, Drewski with Catch 22 Radio, the voice of the South. Make sure y'all tune in every Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. And we out. You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 Radio Show on 92kills.com. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Watch Jazzy. I just knocked out a dope interview with my people over at Ken.
Edge 22 Radio. Make sure y'all check me out at the James Harden Comedy Show. Going down tomorrow, Saturday the 24th. It's lit. We out. Best fan in your head.